While Jesper is trying to get started on his project, I'm going to help him with a little explaining. You see, his mom had told him to stop fooling around in his workshop because she believed, like Joseph, he couldn't make anything from wood that someone would pay for. Now, I have seen a little ahead in this video, and I gotta tell you, I'm worried too. I'm going to try and make something from this log, and in my recent workbench video, I covered the front with cookies. A cookie is just a slice of the log, and you can cut those with a handsaw or a chainsaw, or as I'm doing here, if you have a sliding bandsaw. Coffee tables made from a cookie seems to be quite popular, but my cookies are not that big. Perhaps if I take nine of these and make one big cookie out of it, So I've got 9 cookies, but no idea how to join them together. It's a long shot, but I'll try and shoot a message to the makers group. Jasper, Jimmy DeResta, you're joining cookies. The only good way to join cookies, in my opinion, is to use a biscuit joiner. Get it? Cookies and biscuits? <laughs> I do have a biscuit joiner and some biscuits. So I'm going to take the Arrestor's advice and put biscuits in the cookies. Using the biscuits is not so much about strength, it's more about alignment. In the end it's going to be the glue that is holding it all together. A biscuit joiner is a cheap tool most tool brands make them and it's very easy to use. I don't need to be super precise when cutting as the biscuit can move a little bit back and forth in the slot. After the glue had been sitting for a few days, I for some reason picked up my electric planer and took a few passes off the end grain. I might have made it a little bit more level, but it also caused some chip out on the edges. So I honestly think I'm entering into the easy part of the table now. Because you know, I'm sort of a pro when it comes to filling up cracks and gaps with a little epoxy. I have some old grey silicone and some packing tape that should easily hold a little epoxy resin inside. I somehow lost the footage of the pour, but I did film it with my phone when I checked in on the project. All the epoxy had escaped my miserable excuse of a barrier. So here we go again. Yeah, try to cover your mistakes with that electric plane. Oh, now you've got some silicone caulk and tape that's actually meant to be used to hold epoxy inside? Yeah, just use a lot of it. That's going to help. Oh, and that kitchen wrap. Still using that, huh? Yeah, so now I think I've got these cookies probably wrapped up again. And it's time to start mixing the epoxy again. Yeah, I mean, what could possibly go wrong this time? I mean, I made my mistake, right? Yeah, right. I've even mounted a GoPro on my head, so I can show the whole world how amazing I am at epoxy pours. Did you notice what I did wrong in the beginning? Well, I haven't noticed yet. I still believe this will be the greatest epoxy pour in history. Now that's a guy who just realized how stupid he is. The only thing to do, quickly cover it up before anyone notices. Oh no. No, 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 no. Hey, Jasper, I just wanted to give you a little 
word of advice, all right? Epoxy is dumb. You should just steer clear. Don't even touch it. Maybe when you see epoxy in the store, you buy it and then throw it away so other people can't use it. I guess if you're gonna use epoxy, you should probably read the labels and make sure you're using both the hardener and the epoxy part, not just the hardener and the hardener, because that can cause some problems, as you very well know. After this little experience, I really didn't feel like continuing with this damn table. But then I thought about my mother, and that she used to tell me that when you start something, you finish it. So here is my take on how to clean the hardener of 9 cookies. And I really wanted to prove that I could make this table and sell it. A good way to motivate yourself and feel a little confident is by editing a montage with some cool clips and loud music of yourself doing stuff. So that's exactly what Jesper did. What you see here is a very simple router jig for flattening large surfaces. I'm using two metal guides that's meant to hang sliding barn doors in. I give it a flattening on both sides and I have gotten this new bit that removes a lot of material fast and is made for flattening. I'll link to it down below. Next job is removing some of the epoxy that is on the outer rim of the cookies. I've removed some of it with a flush trim bit. But then I get the idea to leave some of the epoxy and just try to shape it instead. A metal polishing disc on an angle grinder works fine to shape epoxy. After a short cleanup, I start on the sanding. First, I'm taking off the router bit marks with some 40 grit on my belt sander. I do that outside because, yeah, no good dust collection on this one. Talking about dust collection, I am so excited about my new sander here. It seems to suck up most of the fine dust and the best part is when I plug it into the dust extractor here and set it to auto, dust extraction is turned on when I turn on the sander. And yeah, you guessed it, it turns off the second after I stop the sander. The best way of fixing the small chip outs in the wood and epoxy is with CA glue. It's really a time saver compared to waiting for epoxy to dry. I added a little round over to the edge of the cookies on both sides and I sanded it up to 320 grit. This thing is smooth as Tennessee whiskey. Rubio Monaco is actually made for finishing wooden floors, but people also use it on tabletops and other furniture. After my experience with mixing epoxy, I'm a little worried because this is also a two component thing that potentially could be f***ed up. I better call someone who knows what they're doing. Someone not as stupid as me. Someone like... Hey Jasper, uh, <laughs> I thought you might give me a ring mate. <laughs> hey Tim, why? Yeah. A lot of people have been talking about you messing up that uh, epoxy mix. Okay, about messing things up, I need your help. I'm about to... Finish it with Rubio? Yeah, yeah, it's easy, right? Look, there's two cans. A, B. It's three A to two of the B. Look. I've painted it on my wall. Three to one. Can't go wrong, mate. It'll be great. So, while Jesper is putting Rubio Mono Coat on this little project, I'm going to help him with something else he's always forgetting. And that's asking you to subscribe to his YouTube channel. That helps keep the lights on in his workshop. And 
you know, it's really difficult to make videos in a dark workshop. So, if you've learnt something thus far, or maybe just had a laugh, do that little thing for him. Why don't you stay I'm really excited to open my shop at Etsy and put this table up for sale. Before I know it, my shop is open and my first item is listed. Now it's time to relax and enjoy the table a little before it may be gone to somebody else. The next day I'm checking in on Etsy and it says I'm out of stock. What does that even mean? But then I check my table listing and it's... Us people from the north. We are very humble and we don't show our emotions. So I'll just tell you, I'm really excited about this. I made something with my hands that somebody else bought for their house. I can't wait to tell my mother about this. Oh, I got a message. Why don't you stay? Oh, stay